go on. Now when I kid you, noon Eastern time, the Pacific too. On Saturdays, I'll be looking for you. I'm the commander, I love to play. And show groovy movies on a weekend day. Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Going South, a USA premiere event. Coming Tuesday, April 15th at 8th. Getting there is half the fun. You're watching the USA. All right, Raven, we won't trouble you any further. The answers you gave us, they'll do for now. Good. And I won't believe that my husband was a murderer. You won't doubt it when you hear all the evidence. I'm not going to listen to all those lies, because I know you all want to see Gavin Wiley go free. Look, we'd be anxious about any innocent person being accused. Especially when he's been framed. How two seemingly intelligent people could possibly believe such a ridiculous story is beyond me. That my husband actually staged this elaborate scheme to get rid of a dance story. Raven, I think you're being deliberately dense. You know very well that Gavin Wiley was more than that to your late husband. He was going to take Jody Travis away from the dance company. So Skyler should have given him a medal because Gavin did him a favor. Obviously, Sky didn't think so. He wanted to get rid of Gavin and Gunther. My husband loved Gunther. He needed Gunther. So why would he want to shoot him? That is the question we would all like to see answered. And I was hoping that you'd be able to help us. The motive was obviously blackmail. Gunther must have known something about Skye. Some secret. Damien, I told you once before, my husband did not keep secrets from me. He didn't? It's funny, you seem to me like the kind who would. Well, he told me everything. And I thought you said that was the last question. It was. Come on, Tyler, let's go. You know, we still haven't talked about the third victim, Bobby Gerard. Oh, what? That's really too bad we don't have that shoe you found. Look, uh, I told you I'm not really sure that it was Bobby Gerard's. Well, Raven, the description you gave us jives perfectly with the mission shoe. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Now, the fact that your husband burned it has some significance, doesn't it? No. You know, Raven, this loyalty of yours is really commendable, but don't you realize that husband of yours was a cold-blooded killer? Oh, forget it. Doesn't matter, he's dead anyway. Well, we still would like to have all of our facts in order. You know, you probably could have identified the shoe from the ashes. Who cleaned out this fireplace anyway? I cleaned the fireplace, detective. Well, it wouldn't be because you had something to hide, would it? It's my job, Chief Mallory, to keep things tidy. my vacation short just as soon as I, I heard the news, Mrs. Whitney. I'm very, very sorry. Thank you, Spencer. You're the only one who's expressed any sympathy in this room. That's not true. We all know you've suffered a loss. I didn't think it was right to stay away at a time like this, and if there is anything that I can do... Well, Spencer, there's something that you can do for me. You can tell me what you know about the shoe that walked into that fireplace. I don't know very much, Chief Mallory. One evening, Mrs. Whitney called from Switzerland. No, that's not true. Skylar called out. I just talked to Spencer, and I asked him about the shoe. And you thought you left the shoe in the living room? <sighs> yes, I did, but then somehow it accidentally got in the fireplace. An accident named Skylar. Wait a minute. Spencer, are you sure that you didn't burn the shoe? No, Mrs. Whitney, I didn't. Well, Skylar thought that maybe the shoe might have belonged to one of Spencer's girlfriends. What do you have to say about that, Spencer? I have never had a personal friend in the Whitney automobile. Now, calm down, Spencer. We're certain whose shoe that was. And even a clean fireplace is not going to alter our conviction. The only conviction you want to alter is Gavin Wiley's, and I think it's a conspiracy, and I really am sick and tired of Come hearing on, Chief. about it. Uh, we say we're going to get out here. Let's go. Right. I'll be leaving, too, if you wish, Mrs. Whitney. Oh, no, please don't, Spencer. You're the only one on my side. I'm here to help in any way I can. Good. Please stay with me, okay? I need you. I'll be happy to. Thank you. Raven, where is Geraldine Saxon? 
She's staying in a hotel and she's probably very happy. Raven, don't you think Will you... Will you please leave? Good morning. Spencer, you want to know something? What, Mrs. Whitney? All day long I've been answering questions and getting sympathy cards from all Sky's businesses and what I really would like to do is eat something. Is there something in particular you want? Yeah. A milkshake. I'll take care of it. dinner party. It was fine, thank you. How'd she look? I assume you mean Miss Avery? She looked great. In fact, a bit more radiant than usual, but that's to be expected, isn't it? Because of her engagement? I know that's supposed to be true of brides and brides-to-be. I wonder if it really is in this case. Why not in this case, Nora? I don't know. I was just sort of surprised when I heard about this engagement. Oh, really? Why? I don't know them very well, but one does get first impressions. Listen, never mind. Well, my impression is that they are very much in love with one another. Well, you know them better than I do, of course. I don't know Chief Mallory at all. But I don't know, he seems sort of stayed to be with a woman like Jinx Avery. You know, you're getting awfully far behind on this viewer correspondence. Maybe you should ask Andrea to help you. But I don't need any help, Mrs. Kevin. I can handle it myself. You know, sometimes I think you handle a bit too much. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, Geraldine, good morning. Um, I really want to talk to you. Nora, why don't you go see Andrea anyway? Maybe you can get out last month's mail. If you insist, Mrs. Kavanaugh. Oh, Geraldine. I'm so terribly sorry about what happened in Switzerland. You must feel so sad this morning. Yes, I am very sad. Well, why did you even come in? You should have stayed at home. No, no, no. I couldn't bear to be in that hotel suite just listening to all those reports and rumors. You mean you still don't know what actually happened? All I know is that Skylar is dead. And that Raven is a widow for the second time in her life. But you do know that it, it was murder. I mean, that seems to be confirmed. But what motive? And now they're saying that Scholar is responsible for the death of two people. My God. Oh, I know it. I know. I know how you must feel. I'm thinking about what Raven can feel. That's all I can think of right now. What, you haven't seen her yet? No. She made it very clear that she doesn't want to see me. My heart aches for that girl, and there's nothing I can do about it. You know, I had the most terrible premonition while those two were in Switzerland. A terrible fear of something happening. And I was wrong. Oh, but something did happen. But my fear was for Raven. I had the feeling that it was Raven who was in danger. And all the time it was Skylar. Good Lord. How she must be suffering now. Oh, Spencer. <laughs> You've outdone yourself. I'm glad you're pleased, Mrs. Whitney. Oh, boy, this is fabulous. Hey, join me for my Commander USA's April Fool special, because I'm going to be showing Woody Allen's What's Up, Tiger Lily. Hey, you'd be a fool to miss it. Tuesday night. <laughs> These are the amazing Lee Press-On Nails. They press on in seconds. No glue, no mess. Simply press on Lee Super Stick Tabs. Then press on Lee Press-On Nails. That's all. Easy on, easy off. Use them again and again. They just won't break or split. Polish, and they're nearly impossible to chip. So press on Lee Press-On Nails. In natural and glamour lengths and a variety of sizes for a quick, easy fit. Press on. Thank <laughs> you. 
Will bitter feuding drive Joan Collins or John Forsythe off Dynasty? Inquiring minds want to know. I want to know. What's the story behind the cocaine arrest of Peter Sellers' daughter? This week's National Enquirer tells you. How can you forgive yourself when you feel guilty? How did Carol Baker survive? on a deserted island. It's in the Enquirer. Can you break the walls between men and women? Find out in the Enquirer. Over 100 features for people with inquiring minds. Like me. Michael Fogarty is having an asthma attack. He can't blow out this simple match. For occasional attacks, try Primatine Mist. In as fast as 15 seconds, Primatine restores free breathing. Primatine Mist, the fastest type relief known. Look at them potatoes. Where are they going, Grandma? Mommy, what's happening to the potatoes? Introducing the chip that's eating all the potatoes. Pringles Ripple Potato Chips. Every can has more potatoes than before, and every chip rippled thick to bring out the extra hearty, extra delicious taste. So eat the chip that's eating all the potatoes. Pringles Ripple Potato Chips. say heads are clearer in the morning. Well, mine was very clear last night. Well, mine wasn't. Mine was spinning. You didn't give me a chance to, to talk to you about this. You didn't give me a chance to say ten words in my defense. Look, why don't we just say goodbye? It was nice knowing you. Better luck next time. All right, if that's what you want. But not before I get to show you another side of me. Oh, am I going to get the real side this time? Just listen. Please just listen for five minutes. Now get this picture. A guy's in California. He's sitting with his buddy. He's talking about all the old things, about how pretty the girls are and how bad the smog is and how hard it is to get an acting job. Excuse me. And all of a sudden, he sees the newspaper article. And it's about himself, about a guy named James L. Diedrichson. This guy was a Marine like he was. This guy was in the veterans' hospital like he was. His interests were music, poetry, theater, just like his were. Come on, Val, what would you do? I wouldn't lie to people about it. Wouldn't you be interested? Wouldn't you be concerned? I wouldn't go all the way to Switzerland. That was a trip I promised myself two years ago. Oh, come on, Jim. You went to get your story straight. You went to get your... Rumple Stiltskins and your Magda Nefferlings and all those convincing details. It was a lark, Val. It was a game. It was something to do. It was just an adventure for Pete's sake. I was so curious about it. My life at that point was so dreary. I wanted something new in it. Like an heiress? Wrong. I never thought of the money. My God, Val, you think I thought of the money after I met you? You know, you're really something, Jim. You're a much better actor than I ever gave you credit for. You know it didn't make any difference when Uncle Sam took that supposed inheritance away from you. You do know that. Yes, I know that, and I really wish you wouldn't say any more. Just go. I'm trying to say I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry, too. I'm sorry that I didn't listen to Kelly a long time ago. I'm not proud of what I did, but I tried at least a dozen times to tell you. Why didn't you? I lost my nerve. I was afraid I'd lose you. You won't believe this, but I was on the verge of telling you, and Kelly came in, and he did it for me. Jim, I don't want to see you anymore. Is that clear enough? Yeah. Sorry. Get the whole family together for the JCPenney Easter Fashion Sale. 
For Dad, save on all Stafford and Gentry suits, sport coats, dress slacks, and dress shirts. Save on girls' dresses and on all boys' suits. And Mom will look pretty as a picture in linen look coordinates. The J.C. Penney Easter Fashion Sale. It's something the whole family can agree on. Smarter than ever, J.C. Penney. <laughs> this is little Tony. Bring the camera in close, honey. We love chocolate chip cookies. So when the package soft kind came out, we tried them. No rave reviews till now. Duncan Hines came out with a brand new cookie that's making baking history with luscious morsels of chocolate. Honey, look at this cookie, honey. Mm -mm. Compare the other soft cookies to the new Duncan Hines. Believe Pearl, honey. These new Duncan Hines chocolate chip cookies taste better than all the rest. Pure ecstasy. Preview in March. Weird Science. This weekend, Gary and Wyatt are going to change their lives. Making a girl. Actually making a girl. And with the help of a little weird science, they produce some incredible results. What would you little maniacs like to do first? Go ahead. Make your day. Starring Anthony Michael Hall, Ian Mitchell Smith, and Kelly LeBron. You die. Rosemary's Hallmark Card and Party Shop in Summer Center is your one stop for Easter thoughts and gifts because Rosemary's has, quite simply, the best selection in town. With Russell Stover fine candies, Easter gift ideas galore, and lots of warm fuzzies for Easter. Register for this happy hound from Hallmark to be given away the Saturday before Easter. He's a furry, floppy, bigger than life delight, and you don't have to be present to win. It's Easter at Rosemary's Hallmark Card and Party Shop Summer Center where there's always plenty of free parking. That's it for our Mr. John Doe, I guess. Death caused by hypothermia and alcohol poisoning. Thanks for coming in. Such short notice. Awful lot of cases at the morgue last night. Uh, must have been a full moon or something. Bad vibes through the whole city. Or something. Even good friends can be affected. Look, Derek, I'm very sorry. Uh, last night was not the time to give you unsolicited advice about about marriage. You were there to celebrate the whole idea. That's right, I was. It's okay, forget about it. I'm sure you meant well. I'm sorry I reacted so strongly. No, no, listen. I shouldn't have opened my mouth. You had every right to tell me I was out of line. I just had no other way to react. I love Jinx very much. Maybe you don't know that. Any suggestion to delay or put it off, give her a chance, maybe she'll change her mind. I don't think she'll do that. Well, I'm not taking any chances on that. I've never felt this way before about a woman. I've never felt this way before about anything. Maybe this sounds corny. I don't care, but Jinx has been a rebirth for me. Well, I know that kind of thing happens, yeah. I'm sure you're just trying to lay some kind of common sense down in front of me, but I got no doubts. Well, hello. I hope I'm interrupting something. How you doing, sweetheart? Good. No, you're not interrupting. Mm. We finished our business. Oh, great. Then both of you can look at something. Nancy and I just went shopping, and will you believe the very first dress I saw looked absolutely perfect on me? This is the dress, uh, is it? The one and only. Oh. Yeah, okay. Look, I'm sorry, there's a problem. What's that? I'm due down in a lineup immediately. I've got to go. Oh, God, well, this will just take a few minutes. I'm sorry, honey, I don't have a few minutes. It looks real nice, but I'll... I'll give you my seal of approval later. Oh, well, all right. If you'd rather look at criminals, that's your privilege. <sighs> no, I'd rather look at you. I'll look at you later. But talk to Miles. He's a married man. He knows more about dresses than I do. Do you, Miles? No. Looks very pretty. Ah, uh -huh. so you approve? Of course I approve. The only thing you don't approve of is my marrying Derek, right? Jinx, I never said that. But that's the way you feel. You and Nicole both. I mean, I could feel that disapproval last night at dinner. You both wanted to blurt out some kind of warning to your friend Derek. That's never going to happen. No, it's not. Because I already have the dress. Nothing is going to stop this wedding. I'm the bride. See, Miles? I'm the bride. I think I can get Joey to talk about those friends of his, the ones who really did the dirty work. I just have to convince him that he's not ratting on them, they ratted on him. Are you listening to me? 
I'm uh, looking at you. Isn't that good enough? Keep this up, and I will report you to your superior officer. Oh, well, um, just make sure you tell him how crazy I am about you. Calvin, I'm trying to talk business. <laughs> OK, OK, I'm sorry. Look, if you can get your client to talk, that's great. But I cannot promise any immunity. Dee Dee, that is up to the DA. I just wanted your professional opinion. Oh, well, <clears throat> in that case, counselor, my professional opinion is that you are beautiful. And my question for the day is, when can I see you? And I don't mean in a crowd of people, either. Calvin, I told you that I loved you because, because it was silly for me to try and hide it anymore. I certainly wasn't fooling anybody. I don't know. You almost had me convinced. Nothing's changed, you know. You're still married. And I'm not sure I want to be a... Be the other woman? No, I was going to say to be a fool. Which is what I would be if I fell into that trap. Look, Dee Dee, um, I'll tell you what. Let's have dinner. I won't be amorous, I promise. We'll just... Talk. See if we can get this thing sorted out, okay? And maybe I can get you to talk business? Is that an okay? That's a maybe. Ah, uh -huh, that's a start. Hey, well, look at this. The conquering hero returns. How you doing, Calvin? Welcome home. Good to see you. <laughs> I've been hearing all about your ski trip. Your partner was worried about you. Yeah, glad to see you got back in one piece. <laughs> well. I think it's time for me to go. Oh, don't be in a hurry to leave, Dee Dee. Uh, I have to leave pretty soon anyway. The chief wants me to do a little physical therapy on my ankle. <laughs> you know, you've been uh, racking up those injuries like you're bucking for a purple heart. Oh, it wasn't bad. Look, I have to go anyway, but it is nice to see you back. Thank you. Oh, Dee Dee, I'll uh, call you later. Yeah. OK, so let's hear it, man. I'm dying for all the details. <clears throat> Well, it's a long story, but one fact is certain, Skyler Whitney was guilty as hell. Unfortunately, it's... Well, he's dead, and we don't know who the executioner was. Yeah, well, we'll find that out before too long. Yeah. And, Calvin, there's something else I'd like to tell you. I discovered something else in my journey. Yeah, what's that? Well, I think I solved the puzzle of Jefferson Brown. The man who framed your father. Right. Raven seems convinced that Jefferson Brown died in Switzerland. And I guess I believe her. So, I'm calling off the hunt. When word gets around about Skylar, all the police and all the reporters are gonna be at the funeral, so I'm gonna need all the help and protection I can get. I'll help all I can, Mrs. Whitney. Good. For your extra work, I'll even give you an increase in salary. Whatever you make now, I'll give you, uh... Ten dollars a week more. That's generous, thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If we need some more servants, I'll hire some more, and you can help me, okay? You know, you do seem a bit fatigued. May I suggest that you go upstairs and lie down for a while? I think I probably should do that, but I don't think my bed is made. I'll see to that. Raven, I know you don't want to see me, but I decided to come anyway. After all, he was my family too. Wow, what a party! Lasagna, what a mess! Take me to your kitchen! You'll help do the dishes? Not with that lemon liquid. Here's something better for this job. Introducing new improved Joy. One little squirt puts the toughest squeeze on dirt. Look, Joy cleans better than your lemon liquid on foods like this. My brand couldn't cut the dirt. Joy left its dish shining. Joy made this sparkle. Uh-huh. Beautiful table you set. Thanks to Joy. <laughs> new lemon fresh Joy. One little squirt puts the toughest squeeze on dirt. Bad checkup, Mom. You pray you never hear those words, but it could happen. Two out of every three kids between the ages of five and 17 still get cavities. 
So don't push your luck. Make sure your family fights cavities with Crest. You see, dentists have seen clinical proof for years. More of them recommend Crest. And more dentist families brush with Crest than any other fluoride toothpaste. After all, they want good checkups as much as you do. Crest, the dentist's choice for fighting cavities. These are the amazing Lee Press-On Nails. They press on in seconds. No glue, no mess. Simply press on Lee Super Stick Tabs. Then press on Lee Press-On Nails. That's all. Easy on, easy off. Use them again and again. They just won't break or split. Polish, and they're nearly impossible to chip. So press on. Lee Press-On Nails. In natural and glamour lengths and a variety of sizes for a quick, easy fit. Press on. Oh, musty odors. We need Arm & Hammer Maximum Strength Carpet Deodorizer. More odor-destroying ingredient than these combined. And while those sit on top, Arm & Hammer Carpet Deodorizer penetrates, destroys deep-down odors. The whole room's fresh. They work better, cost less. You put the Arm & Hammer baking soda in the freezer. It's not a mistake, Harry. One box to absorb freezer odors and a fresh box to absorb refrigerator odors. Freshen the fridge and freezer with Arm & Hammer Pure Baking Soda. care of the mail. I didn't need any help. Oh, well, that's wonderful. I'm glad. Listen, I'm sorry if I said anything wrong about Chief Mallory and his fiancée. I'm sure I'm wrong about the two of them. I mean, who's to say who's right for each other, right? <sighs> yes, that's right. There's still some mystery to mating. There's no doubt about that. So when's the wedding? Um, it's Saturday, I believe. Well, maybe I can help. I mean, my weekends go so slowly. Maybe I can come over and babysit. No, really, it's their wedding, not ours, Nora, so we won't need any help. Thank you. Well... I just have a funny feeling about the whole thing. Oh, really? In what way? I know you don't want me to talk about You're this. You're right. So go ahead, tell me. What's this funny feeling you have? I don't think there's going to be a wedding. Why do you say that? I don't think Jinx Avery intends to marry Chief Mallory at all. I have this notion that she's really acting out of spite. Oh, what? Where on earth did you get such an idea? All right, I'm sorry. I told you, I don't believe one of the rumors about your husband. No, wait, just I don't believe wait. he cares two cents about that woman. But she really cares about him, and I think she's capable of anything, including pretending that she's marrying someone, hoping that your husband will be jealous. Just stop that right this minute. All right, you can fire me. I am not going to hide the truth anymore. I'm going to say what I mean. Will you just shut up? You have no idea what you're talking about, you stupid woman. It's all right. I knew you'd be angry. I knew that you'd throw me out. But I care too much about you. Nora. Please, please, do you know what they are doing right no. now to your eyes? James Avery! Nora, James Avery is dying! What did you say? I said that James Avery is dying! Do you think that she has time to worry about all this nonsense you're talking about? Bitter feuding drive Joan Collins or John Forsythe off Dynasty? Inquiring minds on all. I want to know. What's the story behind the cocaine arrest of Peter Sellers' daughter? This week's National Enquirer tells you. How can you forgive yourself when you feel guilty? How did Carol Baker survive on a deserted island? It's in the Enquirer. Can you break the walls between men and women? Find out in the Enquirer. Over 100 features for people with inquiring minds. Like me. At all, I have this strange notion that she's really acting out of spite. Sake, where on earth did you get such a I'm idea? sorry, Mrs. Cavanaugh. I told you, I don't believe one of those rumors about your husband. Just I don't minute. believe he cares two cents about that woman, but she's definitely after him. And she's capable of anything. Even pretending to marry someone else, hoping that your husband will be jealous. Yeah, you can just stop that this minute. You can fire me if you like, but I'm going to speak the truth here. I'm not going to be silent about Shut up! You have no idea what you are talking about, you stupid woman. It's all right. I knew you'd be angry. I knew you'd throw me out. But I care too much about Nora. Do you know what they're doing right in front of you? Jinx Nora, Avery! Nora, Jinx Avery is dying! What did you say? I said, Jinx Avery is dying. Now, do you think that she has time for all this nonsense you're talking about? But you don't mean that literally the woman looks so healthy. Well, she's not. Just as there is not 
anything going on between her and my husband. But her interest in him was much more than that of a patient for a doctor. Yes, but don't you understand why now? She has every reason to want his attention because he is her doctor. Do you understand? Are you sure that she isn't just... No, she wouldn't be faking something. Of course she's not faking it. She only has a few months, maybe even only a few weeks. My God. I know it. So now do you see how stupid you were? Not only stupid, but you were also very cruel. I hope you realize that now. Yes, I do. I'm sorry. I cannot tell you how sorry I am. You're not half as sorry as I am. Jinx Avery doesn't want anyone to know about her illness. She made my husband swear a solemn vow that he wouldn't tell anyone about her. And I made him that same promise. And now because of your ridiculous gossiping, I have broken that promise. Please, forgive me. I'll do anything to make this up you can to just you. remember that this is extremely confidential. And you can just keep your mouth shut about this whole thing. I'll never say her name again, I swear. So help me God, if you do, if you breathe one word to anybody, you can forget about working for me or anybody else in this town who needs my reference. Don't worry, Mrs. Cavanaugh, I'll never mention it. Not just because of my job. I feel so sorry for that poor woman. What a terrible thing to happen to her, especially right now. Jinx, this is stunning. It's perfect for you. I don't think I've ever seen a more beautiful wedding dress. Oh. <laughs> Nor a more beautiful bride. <laughs> Thank you. It will take a few more days to get all the paperwork in order, Mike. You understand that? Of course, Derek. I know some of the facts will still be missing. With the accused being dead, there are bound to be gaps in the story. Is that going to cause problem with the grand jury? Well, Mike's a better judge of that than I am. There won't be any problem, Miles. Damien Tyler's original theory holds up completely in every detail that's important. Skyler Whitney engineered the frame-up of Gavin, and he killed Gunther in cold blood. Where the biggest gap lies, the actual motive for Gunther's murder. I mean, he must have represented some kind of threat to him. The word blackmail comes to mind. That certainly wouldn't surprise me. Whitney was a secretive type. Maybe one of his secrets was a dark one. I think that's the most likely explanation. Well, Derek, I guess you know what aspect of the case interests me the most, the standing of Gavin. Well, it's implicit right here in the report. Uh, Gavin's totally exonerated. As far as the police are concerned, anyway, but the court still has to exonerate him. The charge still has to be dropped. Was well, that going to be a problem? I don't think so. I spoke to Judge Bowman this morning, and if I were a betting man, I'd say the odds were 100 to nothing. The charge will be dropped. Well, that's good news for those kids. It's a happy ending for everybody, except Raven. Raven? I hadn't even thought of her in this situation. What is her position with all these charges being leveled against her husband? Well, she hasn't been implicated at all. I don't think she had any idea what he was doing. In fact, Tyler credits her with helping him solve the murder of Bobby Gerard. She volunteered the information that pinned the crime on her husband. Of course, she didn't have any idea the effect it would have. But as a matter of fact, she refuses to believe that he committed either one of those murders. She thinks we're covering up for Gavin Wiley. I can understand how she feels. She was his wife. She still has the Whitney name. And I guess she wants to preserve its honor. Yeah, she's got the name and the fortune. So when we first got to Switzerland, it was like a dream come true. It was so beautiful. I've never been happier in my life. Is that really true, Raven? After all, when you went on this second honeymoon, it was after you had heard some very disturbing things about Skylar. I never heard anything that convinced me that Skylar did anything wrong, and I still haven't, and I really don't want to discuss it. I'm sorry. Go on. <sighs> anyway, it was perfect. We stayed in this exquisite little cabin up in the mountains. And the helicopter used to have to bring us up there. And we didn't even have to use the ski lifts because the helicopter would just take us to the top of the mountain. And then, the last day. You don't have to talk about this now, you know. No, I want to. 
The last day, Skylar had picked this intermediate slope that he thought was perfect. And we took the helicopter to the top. And obviously, I wasn't good enough to ski down the slope because I started going way too fast. And at one point, I lost control and fell down. Really? Were you hurt? No, no. I just had the wind knocked out of me. I'd hit my head on the uh, ground. And when I came to, I was in Skylar's arms. <laughs> He'd come to help me and take me someplace where I'd be okay. And that was the last memory I had of him <laughs> in his arms. And then the shot rang out. And Skylar fell down with me in his arms. <laughs> And I turned around and looked up, and there was this person, this skier, dressed in black with a, a shotgun in his arms. And he just turned around and walked off as if he didn't even care, as if he just shot some animal. And they don't know who he was or why he killed my husband. And they don't care because they just say that Skylar was a murderer. That's what they're saying. I know that, Raven. And that's why I wanted to come back here and be with you for as long as you need me. I do need you, and I'm so sorry I said all those things. I know you were just trying to help me. It wasn't your fault entirely. Oh, please. Can we just kind of forget about everything, and would you come back and live with me? Nothing would please me more. <laughs> oh, good. Spencer Geraldine's going to live with us again. I'm pleased to hear it, Mrs. Saxon. If I can help you move back. Thank you, Spencer. That's very kind. And if there's anything that I can do for you now, perhaps if I knew your plans for lunch. Lunch? Oh, I'm starving. Would you yes. like some lunch? Raven, now there's a practical thing we can do. to that programming meeting now. I trust you will remember our conversation. I will, Mrs. Cavanaugh. I just didn't know, that's all. And you all. still don't know. Because no one does except Miss Avery, Miles, and myself. And Chief Mallory doesn't know? No. Answer that and take a message. I don't have time for it now. Hello. Well, this is a surprise you're calling me. I just wanted to know if you'd read the morning paper, Nora. Where were you, Spencer? I was on vacation, but I'm calling about this article that I read. Normally, I suppose it would be in the society section, but it's not every day that a police chief gets married. I know all about it, thank you. Looks like your plans are working out so good, Nora. You had Jinx Avery paired off with Dr. Kavanaugh, but uh, that's evidently you were wrong again. You think I'm beaten, don't you? <laughs> that's why you're calling to rub it in. Well, don't be so sure. Hey. Join me for my Commander USA's April Fool special, because I'm going to be showing Woody Allen's What's Up, Tiger Lily. Yeah, you'd be a fool to miss it tomorrow night. I remember the first time I saw Eileen, how pretty she looked. Now I think she's beautiful, so natural. Look at her hair, how shiny, how healthy it looks. Ivory shampoo and ivory conditioner don't have lots of fancy ingredients your hair doesn't need. Ivory is made to clean gently and condition gently. I love the way her hair looks. Naturally shiny and soft as a kitten. Not fancy, just fabulous. Honey, how does Dick Van Dyke go? Oh, gee, dear, I don't remember. Oh, I guess you got me again. Stop. How many times has this happened to you? TV Tunes presents television's greatest hits. 65 theme songs from the best love shows of the 50s and 60s. From the shows we grew up with, here are the songs we never outgrew. Together now, for the first time ever on this two-record set, you'll get themes like I Love Lucy, The Beverly Hillbillies, Hawaii Five-0, or how about this one? You got it! Or this one? Yes, 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 and a whole lot more. Leave it to Beaver, Mr. Red, Man from Uncle, Mod Squad, Mannix, Dobie Gillis, Patty Duke, Perry Mason, Superman, Twilight Zone, Wild Wild West, Star Trek, and more. Like me, Don Pardo. 
television's greatest hits, a sensational 65 song countdown for the time of your life. Here's how to order. Master Charge and Visa customers call toll free 1 800 367 6727. That's 1 800 367 6727. Or save COD charges by sending check or money order for $14.95 plus $2 shipping and handling to Television's Greatest Hits, 1142 U, Radio City Station, New York, New York. And remember, specify records or cassettes. How does Dick Van Dyke go? All right, Vicky, I think you fix the baby spot. We need a blue one for stage, right? And if we do musical numbers, we'll need a follow spot. Why don't you just fix them all? Gee, I really don't know what I'd do without all your help, Smiley. Hey, remember that, uh, remember that soft shoe routine I used to do? I remember all your routines, Smiley. Yeah, I do a lot more now. You'd be surprised what I learned. And... Yeah, I'm not sure I want to know what you learned in the joint. Hey, do me a favor, will you? Words like joint and slammer, yeah, don't use them around here. I don't want people to think your big brother was a con or something. Yeah, you're right, I guess. We wouldn't want people to think that, now would we? What's that, man? Hey, listen, heck, that was a one-time thing that happened to me. I made one mistake and I'm there. I'm not gonna make any more, all right? Oh, hi. Hi. Doing? Is Jim in? Oh, no, he's not gonna be here today, Gavin. He, uh... He said he decided to stay home. Matter of fact, he seemed kind of depressed. Oh, too bad. We have some news that might cheer him up. What kind of news? They are dropping the charges against Gavin. Hey, no kidding? <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> so you're not going to go to the slammer after all, huh? That's the way it looks. So I thought I'd come by and ask Jim if he still wants a director. He's got one. Well, congratulations, Gavin. Good to have you with us. Thanks. Now, all we have to do is come up with a theater. <laughs> and the money. Yeah, don't worry about that. We've got somebody working on that now. Don't put your knife down so frequently, darling. Learn to keep your fork in your left hand. That's how it's done on the continent. But this is America. Well, yes, well, it looks better in America, too. I don't see what's so important about that. No, darling, I have a certain standard to maintain. And my escort is a very important part of that standard. That's why I want you to look and act, well, as a gentleman should. Do you understand? Sure, Mrs. Revere. Don't you think that at this point you could afford to be a bit more familiar? In here? No. No, I mean my name. Oh. Call me Buffy. All my friends call me Buffy. Speaking of which, I have a very busy next couple of days. And in some cases, you will be a part of it. You wear glasses? I do not. This afternoon, we have tickets to a chamber music recital. It'll be a bit boring, but I'm sure that you'll manage to get through it all right. Mrs. Revere, I can't go anywhere this afternoon. I beg your pardon. Buffy, I'm supposed to meet the guys down at the acting studio. Hey, I have an idea. If that thing is going to be so boring, why don't you come along with me to the studio? I'm sure the guys would love to meet you. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm sure they would. But I have no interest in meeting the guys. No, really, I think you'd really like them. We really are a talented group. Listen, darling. Maybe you didn't understand me the first time. I have no interest in meeting your friends. Or your neighbors. Or your ex-girlfriends. Only you. And as long as we're together, everything I have is yours. But nothing. Absolutely nothing. That I have is theirs. Is that clear? No. Would you ask for the check, please? <clears throat> Waiter. Yes, sir. Check, please. Certainly. I said clean my new fiberglass tub with Comet? And a leading fiberglass maker said, yes. I said, little scratch. And they said, this is new Comet. It's tough on stains and safer. Watch. Here's porcelain with greasy food stains and a delicate acrylic with soap film. 
Now, new Comet versus a leading scouring cleanser. They were scrubbed, then rinsed. The other cleanser left the stain and dull scratches. New Comet shows only clean. So then I said, new Comet still gets some cleaner. Now, clean some safer. Morning, come on and feel it. Feel the lather on your skin. What a great way to begin. And the scent is cool and brisk. No one starts a morning quite like this. Coast picks you up in a special way. Like the fresh, clean feeling of a brand new day. Coast, what a great way to You know, finding good arts programming on TV is sort of like finding season tickets to the Met. That's why I appreciate Cable Vision's bringing the arts into my home, so that when I am there, I can relax and enjoy great performances. You're on stage with live drama, modern and classical dance, and beautiful music, plus original miniseries ranging from the historical to the controversial. Creative television, that's arts and entertainment. Cable Vision brings good taste to television. If you're going to drink and you're going to drive in Tennessee, we've got a message for you. We're going to get you. Speaker of the House Ned McWhorter and the Tennessee legislature have pushed through the toughest drunk driving laws in the United States. Automatic jail sentences, mandatory fines. So drunk driver, you better watch out. We're going to get you. Yes, I did read the play Cliff found. It's right here. It's not bad. It needs a lot of work. It's, there's, there's not enough substance to it. It needs to be tightened up and rewritten a bit. What about the major roles? Have you figured out who's going to play those yet? <laughs> oh, give me a break, Hector. I just joined the group. <laughs> I don't know what any of your abilities are. No, I can do anything. Anything. Mm -hmm. Anything. So, Mitzi tells me you play a really... Great old man, Mr. Wilson. Eddie, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, call me Smiley. I guess you'll be playing the part of the girlfriend. No, no, I thought Valerie Bryson... Oh, forget about her. Jim told me she's dropping out of the group. So if you want the part, I think it could be yours. Uh, why is Val quitting? Beats me. But something tells me she and Jim had a little fight. I'll tell you another problem with this play, Trial by Blood. The sets. Unless we can improvise, I... Look, I've got a list right here. We've got um, a police station, jail cell, lawyer's office, courtroom. Four sets. And no theater to put them in. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. And here comes the right. solution. Johnny, how's it going? Not so good, Smiley. What's the matter? Oh, it's Buffy. Mrs. Revere. Buffy? <laughs> Who's that? You blew it again, buddy. What blew it? What blow? She owns the penthouse of the Monticello Arms Hotel. Don't tell me she's on welfare. No, 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 no. She's loaded all right. It's just that uh, she has no intention of giving any money to any out-of-work actors. Why don't you... You didn't hit on her for the money already. No, I swear it. I didn't ask her for any money. She just came right out and told me if I had any intentions of asking her to sponsor the group, I should just forget it. I don't understand any of this. I do. Listen, you guys are crazy trying to find a patron of the arts. They are very rare these days. What we've got to do is pitch in and make the money ourselves, rent a theater on a short-term lease, and then hope and pray for public response. Well, the only decent theater in Monticello is the Whitney. Whitney? Whitney? What, what did I read in the paper about Whitney? You read a lot about Skyler Whitney. He's the guy you stole in the place. It's owned by his widow now, Raven Whitney. Did you hear that, Johnny? Another rich widow. I dread going to this funeral. I'll be there, and I'll help you as much as I can. Thanks. Raven, I took the liberty of speaking to the funeral director. I felt that the services should be as brief as possible. I hope you agree. Actually, I wish there weren't any services at all. There's going to be all those reporters there. Perhaps we can avoid them. I wish I had an armed guard to keep them away. Maybe it won't be as bad as you think. I'll tell you one thing. There are going to be very few mourners for Skylar Whitney.
Mountain-grown coffee has more enticing aroma than any other kind. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. These are the amazing Lee Press-On Nails. They press on in seconds. No glue, no mess. Simply press on Lee Super Stick tabs. Then press on Lee Press-On Nails. That's all. Easy on, easy off. Use them again and again. They just won't break or split. Polish, and they're nearly impossible to chip. So press on, Lee Press On Nails, in natural and glamour lengths and a variety of sizes for a quick, easy fit. Press on. Oh, musty odors. We need Arm & Hammer Maximum Strength Carpet Deodorizer. More odor-destroying ingredient than these combined. And while those sit on top, Arm & Hammer Carpet Deodorizer penetrates, destroys deep down odors. The whole room's fresh. They work better, cost less. You put the Arm & Hammer baking soda in the freezer. It's not a mistake, Harry. One box to absorb freezer odors and a fresh box to absorb refrigerator odors. Freshen the fridge and freezer with Arm & Hammer Pure Baking Soda. Edge of Night has been brought to you in part by Arm & Hammer Pure Baking Soda. Freshens the fridge, freshens the freezer. What we absolutely must do today is start planning the reception. Yes, I suppose we should. It looks as though there are going to be more than a dozen people, James. You know, I think we're going to have to rent a place, but nothing too fancy. Well, let, let's think that over. Hmm? You know, whatever we do, I don't want Derek to pay for any part of the reception. I mean, it's traditional, isn't it, that the bride takes care of those things? Oh, uh, the bride's family, but in case they're not involved, then uh, no reason in the world why they groom or friends oh, or... No, no, no. I insist on doing that myself have your share of stubborn pride. <laughs> yes, I inherited that from my father. But you know, I've been thinking about it, and maybe we should just forget the reception altogether. Well, we started out saying it was going to be a very simple wedding, and I think maybe we should keep it that way. When you looked in that mirror, what did you see? The unbelievable. Me, the bride. Uh-huh. In the most beautiful wedding gown you'd ever seen. That's what you said. Yes, it is. Uh-huh. All right, now, do you really want to wear that dress only for the length of the wedding ceremony? It's such a short time. It goes so quickly. I wouldn't if it were my dress. Mm, yes, you're right. Okay. That's settled. There's going to be a reception. Oh, I had an idea. Small as it may be, the car living room might not be a bad idea. Excuse me. Hello? Jinx, this is Nicole. Oh, hello. Hi. Uh, listen, I just had an idea a little while ago. I don't know if you've made plans yet, but I was wondering if you would let Miles and me give you and Derek the wedding reception. I mean, we have so much room in the penthouse, and it would make us both very happy. Oh, well, that's uh, very nice, but... Uh... I understand if you already have other plans, but if you haven't, please let us do it, because it would mean so much to Miles, and it would mean a lot to me, too. I'd like that. I'd, I'd like that very much, Nicole, but I, I don't know how to thank you. Well, don't thank me at all. Just come on over tomorrow and we'll start making plans, okay? Okay, fine. I'll, I'll call you tomorrow. Thank you again. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. You're not going to believe this. Nicole has offered the penthouse for the reception. <gasps> That's terrific. That's wonderful. Uh... Derek is going to be thrilled. Oh, Derek, I've got to call him right away. All right. Chief, Miss Avery's on, too. Oh, thank you. Hi, honey. Hi. Oh, I've 
got wonderful news. Miles and Nicole are going to give us the reception. Oh, that's great. That's <laughs> awful nice of them. Oh, yes, I thought it was very nice. I mean, I know that he's a very good friend of yours, but I didn't think Nicole... Well, never mind. Anyway, she just called me this minute and said that they would be very happy to give it. Isn't that terrific? Oh, it is terrific. Now, and does this mean that you may invite your dad? Well, I hadn't thought about that. Oh, hon, I'm going to have to go. There's somebody outside wanting to see me. I'll see you later tonight. Okay. I love you. I love you, sweetheart. <sighs> Bye. Who is it, Helen? Did she say what she wants? She said that? Send her in. Hello, Chief Mallory. All right, what is this important information you have to tell me about Jinx Avery? Central on USA. You're watching the USA Network. <laughs>